The United Nations Security Council holds a meeting to discuss latest developments in Yemen today. The United Nations announces securing a displacement vessel to transfer oil from the King Suffer tanker. U.S. State Department says that Tim Lander King visits the region to push for peace in Yemen. Good evening. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. I'm Abir Ali and you're watching the English News. The United Nations Security Council had held its uh, monthly meeting on Yemen to discuss the recent political and military developments. During the meeting, United Nations Special Envoy briefed the council members in which he urged the warring parties to make use of the regional agreement to work on achieving peace in the country. We are currently witnessing renewed regional diplomatic uh, momentum, as well as a step change in the scope and depth of the discussions. I welcome the continued efforts of regional member states, in particular the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Sultanate of Oman, and ask the parties to seize the opportunities created by the regional momentum. I also call on all sides to maintain a conducive environment for discussions and to allow the time and the space needed for the discussions to bear fruit. Impatience at this juncture risks a return to a cycle of violence and risk unraveling what has been achieved so far. United Nations said that Special Envoy discussed with the Iranian officials the need to start an inclusive political process to end the Yemeni conflict. The United Nations Envoy's visit to Iran comes a few days after the announcement of an agreement between Tehran and Riyadh under Chinese auspices to resume the diplomatic relations between the two countries. This report has more. A top United Nations envoy Hans Gramberg visited Iran to discuss ending the war in Yemen days after the Islamic Republic and Saudi Arabia agreed to restore ties and restrain a challenge that's fueled the conflict for almost a decade. Hans Gronberg, UN Special Envoy for Yemen, met the Iranian Foreign Minister to discuss the importance of regional support to start a comprehensive political process led by Yemenis to end the conflict, as his office declared. They added that they are going to have an Iranian envoy in Yemen to facilitate the process of reaching sustainable peace in the country. Iran and Saudi Arabia agreed on Friday to repair relations after seven years marked by geopolitical rivalry and in direct conflict, especially in Yemen, where they back opposite sides in the civil war. On Monday, Iran said it wanted to mend its relations with more Arab countries. Gronberg's visit also included a meeting with China's ambassador to Tehran. China, which brokered last week's deal between Iran and Saudi Arabia, is willing to provide assistance for Yemen's reconstruction. The United Nations said the war in Yemen has killed and injured tens of thousands of people since 2015. Thousands of civilians have lost their lives or their properties, and an estimated 4.3 million people have fled their homes since the start of the conflict, including approximately 3.3 million people who remain displaced and 1 million returnees. Thousands of people remain detained by the parties to the conflict, and many others are missing. Essential services are on the brink of collapse, leaving millions of Yemeni people in a dire humanitarian situation. Due to the ongoing conflict and the subsequent economic crisis, the situation is aggravated by the largest food security emergency in the world. The United Nations announced that it has secured the vessel to transfer oil from the decaying suffer tanker. Such a step has been long awaited, especially in the light of the Houthis' previous refusal to cooperate with the United Nations maintenance teams. This report has more details. The United Nations finally announced the purchase of a vessel to transfer more than a million barrels of oil from a neglected tanker that puts danger on Yemen's Red Sea coast and neighboring countries. The oil spill could endanger the African coast as well as any country in the Red Sea, with catastrophic effects on marine life. The salvage operation is scheduled to start in early May. The UN Humanitarian Coordinator for Yemen, David Gressley, remarked that with this step, FSO Safer Tanker is now moving forward with a solution. 
The UN says the 47-year-old tanker is a ticking time bomb that might leak, sink, or explode, causing a catastrophic ecological and humanitarian disaster. The environmental and economic consequences would affect countries throughout the Red Sea region. This would cost approximately $20 billion to clean up, as well as interrupting international shipping through Bab el Mandeb to the Sus Canal. Since 2015, the safer oil tanker has not been maintained due to Yemen's war. For years, the UN has been trying to find a solution for the tanker, but the Houthis' control in the country has made it difficult for the organization to solve this issue. The United Nations Development Program and the Belgian shipping from Euronav have a contract in place for the purchase of a VLCC or very large crude carrier. The $55 million double-hulled ship is 332 meters long. The replacement vessel, a very large crude carrier, is now in dry dock for a routine maintenance before heading to the FSO Safer, located 9 kilometers off of Yemen's Ras Isa Peninsula. The U.S. Special Envoy to Yemen, Tim Lander King, has started a new tour to a number of countries in the region as a part of the continuation of intensive international diplomatic efforts coordinated with the United Nations to revive the stalled peace process in Yemen. The United States Special Envoy to Yemen, Tim Lander King, began a visit to Saudi Arabia and Oman to push forward diplomatic efforts aimed at reviving the country's stalled peace process. The American official's trip to the Gulf on Wednesday comes as Yemen's warring sides are negotiating a prisoner release deal in Switzerland that is intended to end the brutal war in Yemen. Lander King's visit to Saudi Arabia and Oman is intended to continue intensive U.S. efforts to build on the United Nations mediated truce that has brought nearly one year of calm to Yemen, a historic truce which began last April and was extended twice, expired in early October, with Iran back to Houthis rejecting efforts by the United Nations Special Envoy for Yemen, Hans Grunberg, to extend the truce for a further six months. A statement for the U.S. State Department said, Lender King will urge all parties to see this opportunity to reach a new agreement and move towards an inclusive Yemeni-led political process under United Nations Specials. The visit comes as the United Nations Special Envoy Hans Grunberg began a visit to Iran, where he met foreign minister and other top officials in Tehran. The top United Nations official is pushing for further inclusive negotiations between Yemen's warring groups to put an end to the war. Discussions tackle the need for regional support for the start of an inclusive Yemeni-led political process under United Nations auspices to sustainably end the conflict, said a statement by Grunberg's office. Grunberg stressed that ending the conflict in Yemen is important for enhancing regional security. The developments come as Iran announced a deal to re-establish diplomatic relations with Saudi Arabia. The agreement was brokered by China, Iraq and Oman, and will see Riyadh and Tehran reopen embassies within the next two months. The countries also agreed to reactivate a security cooperation agreement and deals on the economy, trade investment, technology, science, culture, sports and youth. Local sources in Al Hudaydah reported that a child was killed by a Houthi missile strike on citizens' homes in Hais. This comes a day after the head of the United Nations mission to support the Hudaydah agreement visited the southern districts. Doctors Without Borders International called on all operating humanitarian organizations to respond to the massive medical needs in Hajjah government, northwest Yemen. 
The organization pointed out that there are difficult health challenges that exceeded the capacity of health workers in the governorate in the light of the spread of malnutrition and the risk of measles. This comes in conjunction with the Houthi militia's enticed incitements to partners not to vaccine their children from deadly diseases, considering that vaccines are a waste industry that must be boycotted. Coming next in the news. Climate change and rains exacerbate the suffering of displaced people in Yemen. So they're giving you nutrition for him? And what's the problem with his hands? What happened? Oh my gosh, it's red raw. Why, why is he eating his fingers? Welcome back. The Food and Agriculture Organization and the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees warned of floods threatening one quarter of the internally displaced persons' sites in Yemen. These are more than a half million individuals in these camps. Climate change and civil turbulences have widely impacted food prices in Yemen and made millions victims of food insecurity. As soon as the rainy season begins in Ma'rib Governorate, the displaced will enter a new chapter of suffering, displacement and nights of struggle, clinging to life in worn-out tents that are torn by the wind and destroyed by the rain. Here in a Suwaida camp, the displaced lived a terrifying night as the rain and wind washed away and tore their tents. Dozens of families remained in the open air with no shelter or protection. The rainy and windy season represent the beginning of a new chapter of the suffering of the displaced people in the camps. There are heavy rains and winds that completely destroyed our tents and left us with no shelter. We were sleeping at night and suddenly the tent fell over our heads. The water was all around us. Our husbands don't have a fixed source of income. They can't afford renting other places. How and where are we supposed to live now? For more than eight years, the displaced people have been suffering from poor and dilapidated shelters. They live a harsh life in front of the fluctuations of the weather. These tents are inhabited by the displaced as a waiting station for a period of time, in the hope of returning to their homes, but they have been waiting for too long, and the pain and suffering of the displaced people expanded with it. This was matched by fragile aid provided by international and local organizations that do not amount to the size of the need and the tragedy experienced by the displaced people, such as these tents that made many families live in continuous suffering. This is our current condition. 
Everything was destroyed by the heavy rains. We can't sleep on the floor as the water is everywhere, covering the whole area. Ramadan is coming and the rain ruined all our food supplies. The humanitarian organizations and the authorities are not helping us during this time. We don't know how are we going to survive. Winds and rains have caused the destruction of the tents of the displaced in the Suwaida camp. The rainwater destroyed their food supplies and furniture, a painful reality that the displaced live with every season of the year. International humanitarian organizations and the concerned authorities have been unable to provide safe shelter for the displaced or improve it to suit the fluctuations of the weather and to alleviate their suffering and condition. The anxiety and terror experienced by the displaced during the rainy and windy season do not come to an end. The Houthi militia started organizing secret courses before Ramadan. Sources in Sana'a said that the rebels intensified their security level that reflects the militia's fear of possible anti-authorization movements. They said that there are directives uh, to double the security personnel in charge of protecting mosques throughout the holy month. With the advent of the month of Ramadan, many cities and regions under government control have been witnessing a severe crisis for weeks in the provision of domestic gas. The crisis cast a shadow over the lives of citizens with the secrecy of cooking gas supply, an imbalance in distribution quotas and a record rise in prices as private gas filling stations by 100%. يعني من نزهين كل حال من السبع سنوات لما نزحنا يعني زوجي تعبان في بحاله نفسيه شغله على قدر الحال يعني اعود الاسرني اني ازرع بالمزرعه طماط كوسه باميه عنبة نبيع اني درس عيالي الحمد لله Sana'a Center for Strategic Studies warned of the repercussions of the Houthi coercive measures against banks. It said that measures could depend on isolation on the Yemeni banking sector from the global financial system. The militia had prevented banks from sharing their data records with the central bank in Aden with the aim of obstructing Yemen from obtaining special drawing rights from the International Monetary Fund estimated at 300 millions. The Yemeni Society for Consumer Protection called on the Ministry of the Agriculture in the Houthi militia government to cancel the 30% increase in live chicken prices. The increase in chicken price doubled the suffering of citizens who live in difficult living conditions, low purchasing power and exploiting of consumer needs. Here is a reminder of the main headlines. The United Nations Security Council holds a meeting to discuss the latest developments in Yemen today. The United Nations announces securing a replacement vessel to transfer oil from the King Suffer tanker. U.S. State Department says that um, Linder King visits the region to push for peace in Yemen. This is the end of the news. It was Abir Ali and thank you for watching.